Okay. Uh, and I'll just do the harmony with you. Okay. I'll let you open, Johnny, when she tells you when she's ready. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Friends and Family Church. Everybody just step right in and let's recognize that he is mighty to save. We're going to worship him with all our heart this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations, Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Yes, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Oh, fill my life again. I give my life to follow. Everything I believe in Now I surrender Savior He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever Author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Savior he can move the mountains. Oh, my God is mighty to save. Yes, he is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light, shine your light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. One more time, shine your light. Hallelujah. Shine your light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, the Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. He just conquered the grave. Oh, Savior, you can move the mountains. My God, you're mighty to save. You are mighty to save forever. You're the author of salvation. You rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, precious Holy Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, each of you. Let me move up front here. God, through his son, Jesus Christ, conquered not only the grave, but everything that would ever rise up and be in your path, That's look right. like an obstacle, That's seeming right. to be oh, yes. un unreachable, unclimbable, unfathomable. And he looks at all of those things and says, but through Christ, all things, yes. through God, all things are yes. possible. 
all things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us today at Friends and Family Church. We're excited about what God is doing, the message that He's giving His church, not just a, the individual pastors, but the body of Christ is receiving a message. Are you listening today? Have you been a part of hearing this week even what God is saying? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is wanting to speak to us. He's wanting us to hear His voice and to obey that that He says to each yes. of us. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. Those that are at home that are watching us on Facebook or maybe YouTube later, and those that are here in the congregation, God richly bless you. Thank you for coming and being with us today. I ask that you would just enter in. Let the Lord minister to you. Feel the spirit of that He says, welcome today. Yes. His Holy Spirit says, welcome. More so than any of us, but His Spirit is saying to you, welcome today. Glory to His name. I thank the Lord for each of you and all that you're doing and in the ministries of your communities and where God has strategically placed you. And I ask that you would continue to understand. And even though man is not recognizing that that you do and not giving you any awards or accolades or anything, but be, be encouraged that when he openly rewards you, that it will be like no other. Hallelujah. So it's worth the investment. It's worth the time. It's worth uh, continuing on. Uh, perseverance is a great word that comes into there. That we persevere even unto the end of, of life. And I'll share some of that with you later. Glory to his name. As I share with you today in the opening scriptures in Hebrews 10, verse 19, and I'll read through 23. Hallelujah. This should be encouraging to you. You, you want to jump up and shout? It's okay after we get started reading it. In verse 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. That's enough to shout. Keep yes. going. <laughs> yes. Keep going. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that, that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Yes. We have a high priest. That's, that's, we're just part. I, as a pastor, I'm just part of the house of God, just like you. Let us draw near with a true heart, yes. in full assurance yes. of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah. I love when I get into clean water. Verse 23, and this is the end of this for the, our opening scriptures. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised yes. is faithful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory Amen. to God. Father, I know today that through you that we are going to be successful. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your grace and your help with everything that concerns us. Lord, those are some at home today may be listening, and, and we speak into their situations now for Debbie Ziegler, Lord, that you help and heal and remove all pain from her. Give her strength that she needs, Lord, that, that she would do nothing but testify of the power and the glory of God and how you've helped her. I thank you now, Lord, that you're going to minister to those that are out of state that aren't here, that are some that are traveling back, even traveling today. And, and I know that uh, Kay and Jerry are traveling, and I ask your blessings on them. And each of our families, Lord, as we see their faces and we lift them up to you, we ask your yes, protection, Lord. blessing, and, and you just pour out an abundance in their Thank life, you, Lord. Lord, of who you are. I'm not talking monetary things, Hallelujah. but I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit that will carry them through every situation Hallelujah. of life. And like Paul, they would know how to be abased and to know how to abound and to enjoy and be at peace in whatever circumstance they're in. Yes. I thank you now, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit to this service today that we might say your words, fill the air with your love and your power and forgetting who we are but pressing on forward into the thank precious you. things of God that we would understand the mysteries that you said we could because of your Spirit. We thank you now for that. We ask, Lord, that you would touch everyone out there that's in the military, around the world that are fighting for freedom. Bless and protect them, Lord. And those that are first responders and can't be in church, be with them. And hospital caregivers, Lord, and doctors and those that are on staff today, be with them and send your power into every room, every, every situation and heal and lift up. 
We thank you, Lord, that you would be today with every one of them. I thank you, Lord, for our, our other churches that are here and, our, and the, all those that, Lord, that are, are far away and those that are ministering abroad, Lord, in missionary settings. And I pray for all of them that you bless them today and pour out your spirit. Be with every one of them, Lord, we pray. Comfort and strengthen. This day is a, is a, is a time, Lord, of fear for many. But I pray that you remove all fear as they walk in confidence of who they are through Jesus Christ. I thank you for that. I ask your blessings now and your anointing upon this service as we dedicate it to you, that you would move in that situation. Lord, I pray for the Broom family today also, that you would minister to them as the, the dad of that family has passed away. And we ask your comfort and your Holy Spirit into every one of their situations. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is not short, and it can reach into every situation, and we are mindful to give you all the glory and all the praise, and everyone said, amen, and that all happens in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ashley, would somebody check the air conditioners to make sure the fans are on and uh, maybe one degree down? It's a little bit humid. You know what I love is uh, when we get together, the Word of God tells us that if two or more are gathered in His name, that He's in the midst. So take a minute right now and notice His presence. Recognize His presence. And right now, to you personally, recognize His presence. And just say, Lord, I love you. Embrace Him today. Right now. Right now. I love, I love, I love your presence, Lord, I love, I love, Lord, I love your presence, I love, I love. I love, I love, yes I do, Lord. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. Oh. Presence. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you this morning. We love your presence. Yes, Thank you for you, your Lord. presence, Lord. I embrace you right now. Holy Spirit, just flood over each one of us. Stir in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We worship you. Your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, the angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, and your people cry out. Shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Your name, the morning breaks in glory. At your name, creation sings 
your story at your name the angels will bow the earth will rejoice and your people cry out oh, all the earth we shout your name shout your name filling up the skies oh, in this praise in this praise Yahweh Yahweh we love to shout your name oh Shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. And there is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing, there is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you, Jesus, you are God. We will sing, we will sing, O oh, Lord of all the earth. We shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name. Shout your name, shout your name, we're filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Sing Yahweh, oh Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. It's 
your breath in our lungs. Yes, Lord, we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. You only. You are Lord, yes, you are Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jesus. We love you, Lord. Praise you. We love you, precious Lord, for you are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence in the house today. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us. Thank you for ministering, Lord God. So this morning, just whatever, whatever your need might be, if you're watching uh, on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, whatever need you have, allow, allow God to minister to that. And if, if, if you say, well, I really don't know what to say or how to do or whatever, I'll tell you what, all you got to do is just say, Jesus. Just say, Jesus, speak Jesus into your circumstance and into your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within his presence. Lord, I speak Jesus. Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Yes. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Thank you, Lord. I speak to Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, Lord, your name is life, yes, it's life, Lord. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Sing that second verse again. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Yes, Lord, declaring that there is hope, that there is freedom. Oh, I speak Jesus. Lord, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life and life in Jesus. With I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. And every soul held captive by depression, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we speak the name of Jesus. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. Shadows burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus from the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The name is Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing.
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness for every enemy, and Jesus for my family, for I speak the holy name of every one of the Lord, hallelujah. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire deep within us. Hallelujah. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power. Somebody needs power. The power of the Lord this morning. Your name is healing. And it's life, Lord. There's healing and life and power in your name, Lord. You break every every stronghold. You shine through through all the the darkness. Burn like a fire. Hallelujah. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's peace within your presence, Lord. I speak, Jesus. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes, every Over every heart and every mind. Because I know that there is peace within your presence. Thank you, Lord. I speak you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Worthy is the Oh, oh. 
you, Lord, we just say holy, Lord. We join in with the angels. Lord, as John the Revelator saw and, and wrote it down, Lord God, he, was, he saw the angels around the Lamb that was slain, just singing holy, 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 holy. And Lord, in your presence today, Lord, we just lift our voices and say, holy, holy are you, Lord. Righteous are you, Lord. Majestic are you, Lord. Jesus. The one that was slain for us. The one that was worthy to open the scroll. Oh, when we say holy, 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 holy. We give thanks with a grateful heart. We give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son again. We give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given. Jesus Christ, His Son, and now, and now, yes, let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. Love him today because he's given Jesus Christ his son and now and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done Yes, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is no other Lord worthy of us to give thanks. Hallelujah, with a grateful heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Miss Michelle today, Vincent, she's not here. She's not feeling well. You know her need, Lord. Lord, there's others that we know in our hearts that need you. Every one of us have a list, Lord, and faces in our thoughts. And we pray that every one of them are touched now as we rejoice before you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your hand of healing. We thank you that you would restore and set free all of those that are bound. Lord, as a song that we just sang, that every addiction would have to go in Jesus' name. Yes. That we would find a good report in that that Satan that made meant for evil, that you made a, 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 something that was beneficial. Just as Paul said, in my chains, last week I preached, Lord, in my chains, that that I saw was actually for the furtherance of the gospel. Lord, let us know your heart. Let us be at peace with your direction. In Jesus' name.
turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strange in the light of his glory and oh, we love you Lord this morning oh turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful oh look into your face Lord and all the things of earth they grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Just looking, Lord we'll God, into your face this morning. Oh, how I love you. Oh, God. Oh, we worship. more than enough. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes. We need you, Lord. Every hour, as we sang a few weeks ago, every hour, every day, every moment, Lord, Every moment we need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just think there's, the Lord just spoke to me. There's somebody, there's somebody that's going to be watching, either watching now or we're going to be watching later on. But you're at a place in your life where all the things that you had put all your trust in and all those things have just fallen apart. And you're standing in a place where you feel totally alone. And you're looking all around and you just don't feel like there's any hope. But the Lord wants you to know today that He is your hope. And for you right now, right now, just speak the name of Jesus. You don't have to pray a whole lot of stuff. Just say, Lord, here I am. I need you, and I know that you are the answer. You're one that's not going to fall apart on me. A strong, firm foundation. So take that step right now and just pray, Jesus, I receive you. Jesus, I accept all that you are, Son of God, the Lamb that was slain for me, the risen Lord, the Lord that's returning again, King of kings and Lord of lords. Just speak to him out of your heart right now. But the Lord knows who you are because he took this time to tell somebody who doesn't know you and doesn't know what's going on to say he knows where you are. He knows where you are. Jesus. There's peace in his presence. So just go into his presence. Hallelujah. We worship you. Thank you. Peace. Peace, wonderful peace is coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, into fathomless billows. Of love, we sing peace, peace, oh wonderful peace. Thank you, Lord. 
coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, into fathomless billows of love, your love, Lord, because your peace, sweet peace, oh, it's wonderful peace, it's coming down, it's coming down, oh, from the Father above. into the presence of you, your spirit removing everything that all we, there is no shadow, Lord, when we're in your presence, for you are perfect light. No shadows in the turning, Lord, and we see nothing but peace, God's peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all, for from you are all things, to you are all things, you deserve the glory, yes you do, Lord, you are worthy of it all, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, to you are all things, you deserve the glory. Oh, for from you are all things, and to you are all things, Lord, you deserve the glory. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence Lord I speak Jesus oh I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Fear 
beyond all anxiety. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. To every soul held captive by depression, who I speak to Jesus. Your name is power. Yes, it's power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Now let's shout, Jesus. Shout, Jesus, from the mountains. And Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus, oh shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Your name is power. Yes. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. The Lord moves on your heart just do as the Lord says to you this morning let him shine through every dark place in your life his name is power his name is healing his name is life eternal life thank you Lord he breaks every stronghold Shines through the shadows, burns like fire. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, and I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Just keep playing that if you would, Johnny. Let me give you a quick testimony. Those of you that have been praying with me and agreeing with me for my daughter, she's been in some dark addictions. She's been in rehab now for about two weeks. I spoke to her yesterday, and I spoke to the daughter I used to know. I'm sorry, that was, uh, that was on Thanksgiving Day, not yesterday. It was Thanksgiving Day. And, I, and she called me. <laughs> Usually I had to initiate those things, but she called me and said, Dad, I love you. She's breaking with the help of the, those that are assisting her. And she's gone to Indiana, separated from everything here. And she's in that area, and she's being cared for, and, and they're ministering to her. But every stronghold is being broken. She's even talking now that when she finishes this phase, she says, Dad, I need to go through the next phase. Oh, thank you, Lord. And so for her to say that, yes. she was recognizing what she needs. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I could say if you could imagine it, she's probably done it. God has a plan for every one of you today. Every one of you here today, those listening at home, every addiction can be broken. Every stronghold can be put under the authority of God. I want to speak the name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus over my daughters. Every addiction. Bearing there is hope. There she and there is. is freedom. She's in the middle of hope. I speak. Maybe you know someone today that's like that. I just want to they need the hope the of Jesus. Till every dark addiction it breaks. Thank you, Lord. Declaring there is peace. 
We praise you, Lord, you are sweet. Your name is power word, yes. your name is healing, your name is your name is hallelujah. Yes, Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, and you burn like a fire. fire. The seal of God, hallelujah. situation to shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. Yes, I speak the holy name. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Thank you for your fire. Jesus. Cleansing fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you all so much this morning. Just remain in this attitude of worship this morning. The Holy Spirit is here moving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Thank you so much this morning. Hallelujah. 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 The song that you heard that was singing was the new song that's going to be coming up. Hallelujah. 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 Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise you, the Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you for joining us, each of you today. See, we have a couple of visitors in the back. Did we get them a card? And Okay, praise God. Glad to have you all here this morning. God bless you and uh, pour out his uh, exceptional blessings upon you. Hallelujah. I know I need his direction. I need his blessings. And uh, I, I just, every day I look for them because I... I said, okay, Lord, it's, it's, things are getting a little bit heavy. He said his yoke was easy, his burden was light. So when I see that my situation starts getting a little heavy, I know that I need to lean on him. And so I look to him in, in every situation that, that when I feel the, the burden of, of the circumstances of whatever is happening, 
then I just kind of step back, take a deep breath, and I say, Lord, I need you. I need you to help me go past this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I do want to take just a moment and share with you tomorrow night here at this location, Friends and Family Church, those of you that may be listening from a distance, I can give you that address, or you can go to our website page or the, the front page on Facebook, and you can find our address. I believe it's on Facebook also, but anyway, and uh, so you can go and find our address, but it's 17332 Carlton Branch Drive in Waimama, Florida. And some of you that are distant, you probably would have to leave probably now to be able to get here by tomorrow evening for the Shema, South Hillsborough County Ministerial Association. We will have all the churches that are participants in this uh, group, and uh, the Catholic Church will be here, St. Anne's. I know that New Beginnings will be here with Brother Brady and different ones. Pastor Tanner is from Maranatha Church of God. He's the, uh, the president and our church, Friends and Family Church, a non-denominational. Some people want to call it interdenominational because we have Assembly of God. We have Baptists. We've had Catholics that attended here. And uh, we actually had a nun that was here until they moved to Orlando. And so we've had a variety of people. But what I share with you today is not bound with a wall or a boundary this word of God is to all men, hallelujah, all of those that would hear the message of God and experience the love that he sends, hallelujah. Actually, I had a, something that was on Facebook. It was one of my nephews, and he was up in a beautiful part of Tennessee. Just yesterday, he sent it on Facebook, and it was the water, and there were some pools in there that were maybe three foot deep. He's out there fishing, and, and there's those great big round, uh, smooth rocks. I mean, and they're like the size of Volkswagens. I mean, and then there's some small ones, but and they're just scattered throughout there, and and this water is just trickling and running down and clear. And he's out there fishing, and he's up in Tennessee in the, uh, maybe it's North Carolina where the Johnson family is. But anyway, he's at their cabin there, and they were doing some work on it. And he had went down to the little river or creek there, and he was, and he was showing pictures. And he says, uh, he says, how do you spell love? <laughs> and he just left it with that, so I answered him back. I said, it's G-O-D, <laughs> for God is love. And that's the way I, I sent it back to him. And it just kind of quickened me in my spirit that the beauty and how he loved being out there. And he had a, some pictures of the campfire and out, outside. Just all the good things that you just you take a deep breath of it. And when I get into the, the, the presence of the Lord like this morning in this praise and worship, I'm like I'm out in Tennessee with all of that fresh water and those big rocks and and this, just the piece of the animals and the birds and, and maybe a crow that's just down the, the stream from you making all these, these uh, uh, noises. And then I just want to take a deep breath of his Holy Spirit. And so I feel that refreshing even here in this service. I love the outdoor settings. Uh, if the sun's shining, I'm usually trying to figure out a way that I can be part of it outside and, and do the things that I love to do. And God knows that. And so I, I share with you today from a heart of knowing the true love of God. I've been sharing with you how that Paul last weekend, he was saying that even these things have worked out for the good. They have actually brought the furtherance of the gospel when I thought it was maybe the end of something. It wasn't. It was a fresh beginning of something else. And so this sermon today... I've been looking for a segue or an avenue to speak to you about more than. I've shared some of that. And, uh, and, but I, I can tell you that's in Romans, the 8th chapter and 37th verse. We're more than conquerors, it says, more than. Each of you here today, whatever you're going through and whatever you're looking for, God will not only supply that and give you the peace like that river and that campfire or the Holy Spirit moving here as we sang this morning and worship the Lord in corporate praise. He said, forsake not the assembling together of yourself. And he, as you see the day approaching of his second coming, even more so, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. I know that there's a, has been a, a shift and a change since COVID, and many churches are struggling for numbers. But I'm telling you today, God has not changed. <laughs> he is the God today, yesterday, and forever. Hallelujah. And He is love. But as I share with you these things today, not just more than, but I've titled it, The Good 
of all things. I, I got to thinking about it. No matter whether I like it or dislike it, the good of all things. If I can find that, I can be at peace. I was sharing with Johnny before service this morning one of my favorite programs I used to watch when it was on weekly. It was Kung Fu. <laughs> And there were some of those programs that, you know, and what was interesting that he would, they would be talking and they would have a, you know, a weapon of some sort and, and he would just kind of shift his head. And then he, was, he wasn't the drama of what was in front of him or the fear of it. He didn't receive any of that. And I look at the spiritual man today as I spoke to you last week about the weapons of warfare and putting on the whole armor, not a physical armor, but that of God, that when the things there, he can break every stronghold. He can bring light to a dark situation. And there's nothing too difficult for our God. Hallelujah. And he's ready to raise you up and give you peace and remove all fear about every situation that you're in. And so I titled this today, The Good of All Things. And then I went out in parentheses and put beside that, I couldn't let it go by, Romans 8, 37, more than. <laughs> so as I share with you today for a few moments here, I'd like to start out with that thought in mind about God providing, even when we don't see. I'd like for you to turn to the book of Psalms, the first chapter Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Psalms, the first chapter and the first three verses, listen how David wrote these words. If you would stand with me in honor of the word this morning, and just three verses, I won't keep you up very long, and I'll let you sit back down. I know some of you are having difficulty with backs and legs and other things, and we're trusting God resolves all of that. Hallelujah. 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 But in verse 1 of Psalms, and in honor, I thank you for standing. Those at home, if you would like to stand or raise your hand if you're not able to stand, just whatever, just look to heaven as I read this. It said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings, for, brings forth its fruit in its season, who leaf, whose leaf shall never wither, not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Father, I thank you today for your living word, that these are not just words that I'm sharing today of a fairy tale or a story that might touch us and tingle us some way, but Lord, they're, they're words that will carry us, just as it said in Joshua 1.8, if you want to be successful and prosperous, that, that you would meditate on this word day and night, and that you might be bold and courageous in the ninth verse, and it goes on to say, without any fear, without any problem of, of, of worrying about the circumstances, knowing that you are our armor, Lord, that we fight the battle through you, and we war not against flesh and blood, but against power and principalities in high places, and today we stand in authority, not because we are anything great, but because our God that we serve is God Almighty, great in every circumstance and every measure, not wavering in any way, and we thank you today that we're going to be successful, Lord, in everything that you give us as we look into your face and find your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As I was sharing with you, uh, I mentioned to you last week about in Philippians. And it was in the uh, first chapter, and it was uh, uh, 1 through, in the first chapter, yeah, 1 through 12, uh, actually verse 12. And it said that I've, it turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. That's what Paul said. 
as we preach, Johnny, Sue, myself, Kim, uh, whoever's ministering, sharing, George, and when you're in teaching or sharing, sometimes you have these things that you want to share with people, but there's just not enough time. And I didn't go into this last week coming off of a, into that because I would have been on one of those rabbit trails that we talk about some preachers go off onto. I didn't want to do that because there was something in here, the meat of this, and I didn't want to give you just a sample like at the grocery store when they have those little uh, things set up that you get a little taste of something. I didn't want to give you just that little bit of what was there. I wanted you to, to get a full taste of the flavor, the good of all things. Understand that when you're looking into the face of problems and trials at work, in your family, even in the home that you live in, in the neighborhood where you are, I tell you today that because of the strength of God and the help and healing that is, His name is, uh, is power. It is light. It, it is redeeming. It, is not, it removes the struggle from whatever you're going through and that there is a good in even the things that you don't understand. And I as well. And all of us today. How did I get in this situation? I don't know. And if this is a test, I pray that I pass it, Lord. When I get on the other side of this situation, whatever it may be, that I could, people would say that now there goes someone who has, has things under control, but and they just don't know. That's a segue or an opportunity for let me tell them, I am no different than you. I am, I am not Superman. I am not anything except what God has made out of me. All I do is reflect his love, for God is love. I shared that a minute ago. I share his light. Just like the sun shines on the moon, the moon shines on the earth, creates tide changes and everything, even though that light is from the sun. Just like us, you can move mountains because of reflecting the light of who he is. The tides of this earth and many things are subject to the phases of the moon. And so I say to you today, the good of all things, let us look for it, and no matter what's happening, even though we don't understand it, so as I shared that last week, I, I appreciate you letting me reflect back. But today I want to share with you out of Romans 8. And I'll kind of keep you over this way most of the... In the 18th verse of the 8th chapter, I'm going to read for just a little bit here. I'm going to let the Word minister to you. It'll, it'll, it'll touch you today. Listen careful. Romans 8, verse 18. Thank you, Lord. For I consider that the suffering of the things present, of this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the I'm going to take these back off. I can read better without them this morning. Something's changed there. Compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The very first part of that, for I consider that the suffering, whatever's causing it, of this present time are not, you might want to underline are not, worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revelation of the sons of God. For well, the creation was subject, subjected to futility. That means it's just kind of frustrating. Not willingly, it didn't do it by, by, it had to be almost pushed into it, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the certain because the, the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Okay, wait, till now that it's changing. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. What suffering are you going through? He started out, I consider the sufferings, verse 18, eighth chapter. What is your redemp uh, the redemption of your body? For, 
we were saved in this hope. But hope that's, that is seen is not hope. If you see a way in a path to get there, that doesn't mean there was hope. Let me read it again, verse 24, 8th chapter of Romans. For we were sa- saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Just that simple. But if we hope for what we do, do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. I likewise, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. I am weak, but thou art strong. Dear Jesus, keep me from all wrong. Oh, I'm not going to go there right now. Likewise, the Spirit who also helps us in our weakness. Are you feeling weak about something? For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. As you cry out with words and groanings that you don't understand, God is ministering being ministered to. He's, the, the words are being spoken by your Savior, Jesus. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good. Therefore, I got my title for this, all things are uh, the, the good of all things. Work together for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, uh, foreknew he also predestined to the con- conform to be conformed to the image of his son. That means to be like Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. I like that. Verse 31, that then shall we say to these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? Should I say any more? Should there be a praise in this house? Should there be one at home in those that are sitting today? Should there be something that, should there be a reason today to know that our hope, if we're seeing it, then it's not hope. We're walking, it's just like the word faith, for faith now is the substance of things hoped for, but it's the evidence of things not seen. It doesn't exist around you. But God is working an impossible circumstance to bring about a possible way of making it happen. And then after it's over, there's many of us say, well, I, 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 I should have predicted that. I should have saw that. I should have known that. Or, or like on the TV commercial, I could have had a V8. <laughs> I'm telling you today that God is the V8, that God's Holy Spirit is the revelation. God is the one that you can walk in even though you don't see it. When there's an opportunity for you to move forward in your job situation, an opportunity for you to move forward in school, for there's an opportunity for you to move up in the community, I'm telling you today, it's just like trying. Uh, I told a man here a few years ago, and, and he was telling me that he said, I want you to pray for God to send me a wife. I said, careful. <laughs> And I says, and I says, I don't mind God sending you a wife. And I said, because a man who findeth a wife findeth a good thing, the Bible says. But then there's there's the wife that we might find out of our anxiety and our impatience and all of those things. And I said, and I says, do you know how to be handsome? And he said, Well, I'm not very handsome. And I says, I, that's not what I'm asking. Do you know how to be handsome? I told him, I said, I've seen some beautiful ladies married to some really homely-looking plain men. And I said, what made them attracted to them was that they made themselves handsome because of what God did through them. They were always seeking first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and the strength when he would speak in those, those words that each of you have the opportunity in your families, in your communities, in the, uh, the, when the guys get together, you don't try to boast. But when you do speak, it's something of importance that the Lord that's within you would rise up some wisdom that they would listen to you and know that you're speaking out of something greater than who we are and the average person. And because of that, you make yourself adorable and handsome and something that someone would like to be a part of. So to be handsome has nothing. God doesn't look upon the outward appearance of man as man does, but he looks upon the heart of each of you today. Those at home, and and if you're seeking out something today, I'm asking you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the bad things that you say are happening to you, that God has the good in them, and every one of them there is good, and you have to wait on him, and you come to the other side of it. I had a man that worked one time that he told me, and we were working together, and he told me, he says, he says, do you know how strong you, he, he lifted weights almost every day, took vitamins, and he was, I mean, he was a man's man. And, and he told me, he says, do you, and I says, for you to say that, and even ask me that, I feel that it, it, it's a compliment to me that I, he says, he says, I work out and do all this. He says, but you, what do you do? And, he, and he, one day he even he come up to me and he pushed me aside from the warehouse window. I was ordering some parts, and, and he pushed me aside. He says, get on out of the way. He says, and when you grow up, buy yourself a full-size shirt. And all of those words were just to, just to bring me down. And I walked right back up to him, and I got right in his face, and I smiled. Remember, I told you last week you have to smile. Sometimes you need to smile. I got right in his face, and I, his name was Greg. I said, Greg. I says, do you know people pay good money to look like this? <laughs> and he laughed and hit me on the back. He says, you know, you're right. <laughs> we don't have to take those things as a personal attack and a personal uh, a situation that you're ugly or you're this or that. And, and I'm, I, some of the guys said, your mama tied a pork chop to your, to your string and put it around your neck just so the dog would play with you. You were so homely. But I'm telling you today that those kind of things don't mean a thing in the kingdom of God. When you're walking in the power of, walking in the presence of, the very things that look to be bad, the good of all those things is there if we will look for it. It's that that we don't see. That's where the hope is at. That's where we find a, a, an opportunity and the ability to persevere. I mentioned the word perseverance. I read it for you just a moment ago. Romans 8, verse 28, and we know that all, say that with me, all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. You, some of you may recognize some of these names. There was a pastor, Ed Bratcher. He had written this. I got this from stories and illustrations. There's something in the role of a pastor that says that a pastor should always be available. And if you'll think with me for a moment, to every person, no matter how large the congregation or how small the congregation, if you're always available, then you're never available because I'm with someone other than that person who wanted me to be available, and I wasn't. So in the circumstances of life, I cannot do all things except through Christ Jesus. In myself, I cannot. In him, I can. And so just as Jesus stood before the disciples, I don't know if you've ever put this together or not, Jesus himself told the disciples, it is expedient that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comforter will not come. Jesus was there. He was in the presence of the disciples, teaching, leading, and doing the things that he needed to do. That the Spirit, he said, I'm doing the things my Father told me to do. But when he went away, and it was expedient, because when he went away, that there was something took place. It's just like Elon Musk trying to put satellite around the world that anywhere, at any time, your cell phone will work. That you can tap into a source. Well, I hate to tell you, Elon, but God's been there a long time. 
because of when Jesus ascended into heaven and he said, it's expedient that I go for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter will not come. When that Comforter came, he was, he was available 360 days a year, 65 days a year. Every day, every moment, every hour, dark times, light times, hard times, great times, he was always available since he went away, and his spirit was now all over the world. I love that we, the song we used to sing, all over the world, his spirit is moving. All over the world, as the spirit said it would be, that he was able to minister so there's something about a pastor that I can't be there all the time. And I'm sure at times it, it was felt as a negative thing that I was not able to be there because of the circumstances, location or uh, transportation or whatever it was. I'm not always available, but he is. So I'm glad that I can pray with someone on the phone until I can work things out and that we can join together then. Ed Young wrote, if you're always available, then you're never available. So somebody else went right on with the way I feel about it. George Berkwit wrote, again, these are all out of the uh, uh, illustrations and stories by Robert Morgan. What gives the manager's job its nightmarish quality? Think with me for a moment. What, why do you want to be a manager? Why do you want to be a school principal? He's like the head manager there. He doesn't own it. It's, a, it's by the county and the schools and the people on, of course. So he's a manager in a sense. So what's the, big sto- what's the big problem with being a manager? If I were to ask you today, manage your time and write me a report tomorrow of the day before and how you feel like you managed your time. Well, what does that mean? That meant that you spent it at times not looking at your phone. You spent it in times not being entertained by the television set. It means that you poured yourself into a time of prayer, a time of intercession, a time as I just read that you meditate even in, uh, in Joshua 1 and 8, that you meditate on this word even day and night that you might be prosperous and successful. You said, well, I want to be prosperous and successful. I said, well, are you? I ask myself, I ask each of you today, Paul seemed to be thinking that he was successful, but yet he basically just gave it all up. A Damascus Road experience took everything. He said, I know how to be a base and how to abound. He was a Roman citizen. He had all of the credentials that he needed. And yet in his spirit, he said, I have everything, the good of all things. And he was able to understand that. So the interruptions is the answer. What makes that manager, or you, or me, on the study that I did, every school principal in a survey that was done, think about this with me for a moment. Just in a school principal, him as a manager at that location, he was interrupted. He had a schedule and a plan for what he wanted to accomplish every day. But most school principals in the, the uh, uh, survey that they ran were interrupted 25 times during a school day with something unplanned. 25. Some even went into 28 times a day. Can you imagine and you think about your situation? Well, I didn't get anything I wanted to do accomplished today. And if you write out a plan, it's good to have a plan. It's not necessary that you complete your plan. But in the good of all things that can come to you, if you, no matter how bad it is or how good it is or what the story is along with it, is that you can walk in the blessing of knowing that the interruptions are what your job is. You're the manager. You're managing your time. You're managing your relationship with God. You're managing your relationship with Christ Jesus, understanding, believing, studying. Rod Sterling, you may recognize that name as a writer and television producer. He wrote, it's difficult to produce a television documentary that is both incisive and probing when every 12 minutes that it's interrupted by a commercial. (laughs) 
Could you imagine you're trying to really speak to someone as I am this morning, and Megan were to run up here in the middle of my sermon and say, whoa, 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 I want to tell you all that we're having this birthday party. And then Johnny, right, I'd get started again. Every 12 minutes, somebody would run up here. Could you imagine the interruptions and me trying to get a thought across to you? I would think how rude, how, how uh, uncaring they are that the message of God would go forward. I ask you today to be awake and be alert about the things of God and managing your T-I-M-E. That you have, you could justify, look at God and say, if your telephones, it'll, a lot of times it gives you a report. Your time was down two hours and ten minutes. And I go, praise God. And a lot of times I'm, I'm sitting and listening to the things that I listen to. Uh, Kim came in this morning and, and uh, I was listening to uh, the sermon from last week. There was something I wanted to remember exactly how the Lord had me say it. And I wanted to hear that. And so I'm, I'm in there shaving and, and I'm listening to last Sunday's service. So yes, I have a lot of time on here and so do you. I were to ask today, if we were to outline and give, give a report on our time, what would yours be? And every time when TV, uh, when they started with uh, uh, all the different opportunities for satellite, direct, and, and uh, dish, and, and all those, then cable came along, all the things that were coming out there, and they just started putting them in. And then they started talking about all these channels, and, and then there were some channels that you, you really didn't want to see. And they would show you some bits and pieces of things that were actually not good for the eye to let it into your thoughts. And to manage that was a job. It still is. I can go to classified ads in Facebook, and I see things. I'm like, why is that in classified? What are they selling? And I report it. This is offensive. And I let them know that I don't appreciate them injecting such things in the middle of something that children can go look at. So when you're trying to do something important and you start having all these interruptions, if you can learn to smile and find the good in all things. When we talk or even dream of the possibilities of getting away for a little while, we imagine a place and a, an allotted time for rest without interruptions. That's what we look for. So that word interruptions comes in there again. Have you ever maybe in your, your house that you're, there's some time that you just need to think and meditate and, and you said, is there no place in this house that exists without interruptions? You may have thought that about yourself in a situation that you were in. I'm getting ready to close. Thank you for bearing with me this morning. My personal observation is that a mom lives in a continuous interruption. And she's looking for change also, and it's not another diaper she's looking for. And they, during that time and, then, and that circle, it can become so overwhelming that I've met, met many men, and when they would go home and I'd ask them with that new baby in the house, how's things at home? They'd say, you just don't have any idea. And I said, that's why I ask. I think I do. And it's going to take a while. And after a while... It'll change some. It'll move into different areas, and you'll begin to teach rather than take care of. And you move through the phases. In your relationship with God, you're going to move through some phases. And it's okay to learn how to handle interruptions, even spiritual interruptions. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 28. Most of you, like I said, you usually know what that, that says. And we know that all things, that's the title of my sermon, the good of all things. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Do you love him today? There's a question for you. To those who are called, do you feel the calling of God? on your heart according to his purpose do you feel that you have a purpose do you feel that there's a need for you have you found your place in Christ Jesus for whom he for 
foreknew, he also predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son, God wanting you to be like Christ Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 37, and I'm closing this morning. Skip right down from where you are. And this is the conclusion to what I've said to you today. If you don't remember anything else, remember Romans 8 and 37, 38 and 39. Stand with me as I close this service today. Yet in all these things, in verse 37, the 8th chapter of Romans, yet in all these things we are more than. (laughs) Uh, There it is. You're not just a conqueror, but you're more than. And there it is. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you that in all of those those, uh, projected uh, thoughts of life, the depth, the height, there's nothing that can separate us from you. I thank you today, Lord, that yet that, that we are more than conquerors in verse 37, that, that we can walk in that and know that, and not that we have an a idea or a hope or a way that we can accomplish it ourselves, for that's not faith. That's not hope, Lord. Hope is something that we can't even see an avenue for, and we look to heaven, and we, our hope and our trust is in you. I thank you now, Lord, that we center this as we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, that you would let every one of us live a life pleasant unto you, not just here in this Sunday morning service, but as we leave this place and we go out into this week as the uh, the Christmas season is upon us, the Christ season is upon us, and it's the birth of Christ, and we thank you, Lord, that it's all about you, and we look to you today, and we thank you that you were willing to come in a humble fashion, a humble manner, and that you would make a way for us where there seems to be none, that our souls could find eternal rest. And without the interruptions of this world, Lord, that we can just breeze through them because we've learned to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And even these interruptions that are coming, we would be able to embrace them and move through them, Lord. And I thank you today that you would touch us in our hearts and our minds, that we would be of one mind, in one accord, and that we would recognize the good of all things. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Is there one this morning that would come, said, I need that peace in my life. I need to know Jesus in the way that you spoke about that surpasses understanding. Is there one here this morning, you stay in this attitude of prayer here, those that are saints pray this morning. Those of you that are looking to, uh, I pray that the conviction of God would touch every one of our hearts. Those that are at home, that you're watching this on Facebook today or see it later on YouTube or wherever it may be, that this spirit of the, uh, that here this morning that's hovering over this place would touch you, that you would feel the conviction of the heart, that you need a Savior. It's impossible to meet God without going through His Son, Jesus He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. Do you know him today is my question for everyone listening at home as well as those here in the sanctuary. Do you know him today? Have you made that decision? I went and prayed for a man. I'm going to close with this. Mr. Broom was his name as I prayed for that family this morning. You may have heard me in my prayer ask for help for that family. Just a week ago, I received, uh, actually, uh, Sunday, it's been, what, two weeks ago now, and I received a note that I needed to go visit with him in the South St. Joe Hospital, and I went to visit him, and he was in his 80s, and he accepted Christ. Well, he passed away. He is no longer with us, but I know where he's at. 
he settled that. He didn't, I didn't sell him an insurance policy that his family would be able to pay off his debt. I spoke to him about an assurance, not an insurance, but an assurance. Today, that assurance is what I spoke to him about. That's what I'm sharing with you now. Just as Mr. Broom accepted Christ in his 80s, he said, I want to go be with my wife, but I want to be sure. And I said, well, pray with me. And he did with tears coming down his eyes, dripping off of his cheeks. He had a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties. And unless God worked a miracle, I didn't see him progressing too much further than from that day. And he didn't. But God met him. God will meet you. No respecter of persons. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord. If you would come this morning, opportunities here. Confess Christ before men, and he'll confess Christ to you, for you, before the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Johnny, sing something, then I'll pray a closing prayer. John, if you would, those of you that are learning it, sing it with him. Father, I thank you today for you are worthy. I thank you today that you would minister to every person here. Let this message go out, Lord, and let it be carried in the hearts of these that are here. Let it be heard by those that are at home listening today. And as this message is recorded, Lord, let it have a, 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 a longevity to it, Lord, that it would continue to, even in the time that it's needed, Lord, that it would be timely in someone's life. And it would fall upon their ears and they would hear the call of God and they would make a difference and a change in their life to join those that are the saints, join those that have hope, join those that, that are believing that Christ Jesus is the Son of God. We thank you now, Lord, for your peace that you'll settle upon your people. Go with them and protect them and help every one of them, Lord, as they go this week in Jesus' name, that they would share the message of love. And we give you all the glory and all the praise as we dismiss this service today. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. If you want to stay and sing with Johnny for a moment, that's great. Give my praise, God, my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's gonna give my praise.